Good morning, YouTube. <laughs> so today we'll be servicing a vintage ladies' date just. This model number is a 6917-8. Uh, is a dash 8 because it's yeah. all gold. Yeah, right. Uh, and this it's has more, acrylic crystal and a we have ladies president bracelet with a bark finish down the center links and, and a bark bezel. And it's more crowded. Now this video will be going through the whole process. Uh, Basically yeah, like everything. And, um, in Sacramento, um, they're not really worried. As you can see, it. there is a little bit of problem with my the winding is frozen when you manually wind the watch. The automatic they work, uh, module turns, they like and farms, that's not what we want. Like, um, the auto yeah, needs space, to be yeah. independent of the manual wind. So Here, yeah, that's basically go. the issue that's bringing the watch in. Um, this watch is in great mask. shape, and all we really want to do here is disassemble the movement, give it a pre-clean, final clean, uh, polish the case. We're going to do a light polish on this case because the bark is very delicate finish. We will be assembling the movement after polishing, and we will be detarnishing the gold on the watch. So hope you enjoy and uh, watch the entire video if you like. Thank you very much. So what's up watchers? We got another cold day up in this piece. And <clears throat> if you're watching this, then you probably saw my last video or not. Um, that one was the Explore 2 bezel refinishing video, and I hope you liked it a lot. Um, so I was just showing you earlier this lady's um, 6927 uh, model, uh, ladies date just um, with the president bracelet. And it's bark, it's got the bark finish on the bezel and it's got the bark finish down the center of the bracelet. Um, now it's a 2030 movement. Uh, the um, parts are discontinued. Uh, Rolex is not selling them anymore to uh, shops with a parts account, but they might still have them available to service at their um, factory owned facilities. But anyways, we have some parts here, and as you can see in the previous uh, shot, that um, auto module was frozen. Um, so, you know, I got the watch pre-cleaning. Um, I'm gonna fully disassemble the movement after pre-clean and check out all the parts more thoroughly once they're fully cleaned. Uh, do any repairs, I'll uh, final clean the watch and then um, put it all back together and see how it's running and it'll probably just be running just fine. Sometimes the 2030s have problems, but other times they're, they're okay. Um, but you can't ask too much from them because they are, you know, maybe probably about a 50 year old watch, um, but you know, we have luck. Um, but the polishing is going to be really easy. On this, I, I might uh, throw some tape down over the bark just to preserve the bark finish, uh, give it a light uh, satin finish down the sides of these links. And uh, yeah, but you know, if the tape is having a hard time sticking to the uh, center links that are bark finished, I might not even uh, polish the bracelet and I'm basically just going to focus on shining up the side of the case and doing the satin finish on the tops of the lugs, do the case back. But for the bezel and the bracelet, I might just take it easy on that. I'm going to um, put them in, um, in a solution that uh, takes the tarnish off of the watch. So. I do like when the gold gets tarnished because it gives it this dark 
gold color. Um, sometimes, I don't know if, uh, if the customer wants that and they might want to see, you know, new life brought into the watch. So for a lady's watch where a jewelry style piece, um, that isn't going to be, uh, that is only going to be lightly refinished. I might just, uh, put it in the anti-tarnishing machine just to give it some new life, show some difference. Um, especially because, you know, I'm, I'm going to brighten up the sides of the watch. So unless they ask for no polishing, then, um, I don't, I, I think they might just want the watch, you know, polished and looking a lot brighter. Um, if it was like maybe a Mel's men's vintage solid gold sport watch, you know, I might try and say, don't polish it. it has that nice aged look to it. Uh, sometimes the gold even turns a little purple. So I'll be doing this real quick, real quickly here. And I'll get you a better angle to see how it looks. So you can see here, there are these light scratches on the sides of the case. And the lugs are a little bit worn on the top. So the finish is gone, the line finish is gone on the lugs. As for the bracelet, you know, it's actually in good shape. A lot of the, these, the times these bracelets, they're super worn. You know, a lot of these women have had these watches for quite some time as an older one and they wear them a lot. They might wear them with other pieces of jewelry. So they get really banged up on the wrist, but this one's actually in great shape. It's a nice preserved bark finish. We'll be doing the case back too. But it's gold polish is so quick, it's very easy. So now that you saw what we're working with, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, should be quick. I have a nice hard belt wheel here. And I'll be using an abrasive compound for the initial polishing. I'll have the motor on slow, about 1,725 RPMs. gold you don't need to put very much pressure and you want to keep the piece moving so you don't concentrate all the polishing on on one area of the case so I move it up and down I do light little circles across the surface I didn't even add any polishing compound to the wheel. This is just the raw wheel with whatever compound isn't already. So 
I just did one side. I'll show you what that looks like. And then I'll do the other side. But to keep the video short, I won't show you polishing the other side. I'll just do full instruction on one side of the case, so. So this is what it looks like after the felt wheel. It looks good from afar, but when you get close, it is foggy and you could see that the finish is a little brighter than the side of the case that isn't polished. It's a little foggy, but we got all the dents and scratches out and that's all you need to do. Very gentle polish. So now we continue with the second wheel. It's less abrasive than that felt wheel. Turn on slow again. Now I use a white rouge, which is also less aggressive than the green. That's all we need to do. So here we are. You can actually see more of a mirror finish in this. You go up close though. You can tell it's not super good it's definitely not done but in some places when the light hits it it's foggy and in other places when the light hits it it looks mirrored so it's not 100 percent finished quite yet so now we go to the last wheel to use this really nice fluffy one and use a yellow rouge actually uh, I like to finish this off with a high speed have a, a faster release Crank it up. And that's literally it. Gold is super quick to polish. You just need to be careful because it polishes fast. So that's what we're looking at now. Way more mirrored finish. So good. Look at that. Not a scratch on it. See the side that hasn't been polished?
Okay. Now the, the case is almost finished. I'll show you where So now that both sides of the case are finished, I'm gonna move on to uh, the case back. Um, this is also really quick. I guess I'll just show you. Just super light polish around the sides. just enough to brighten it up. Then we need to give it the line finish on the back. Now this is how I do the line finish on the back. I have this heavy block. I got my sandpaper on a clipboard and I got double-sided sticky tape on top of the block. Now I find where the original direction of the lines were going, stick it onto the block right in the center, flip the block over onto the sandpaper. Make sure I feel it nice and flat. The block is straight and go up. I flip it, bring it down lightly, go up one more time, flip it over, and that's good. That's all I need. This will clean up very nice. I usually wipe it down with alcohol after... Um, I polish and clean the case and the watch is fully serviced. I'll wipe it all down with alcohol. Make sure there's no more fingerprints, anything like that. Cause I want the watch nice and clean for the customer. So now it's time for me to put the line finish on the top of the lugs. This is a Ray Foster lathe with a 220 grit sandpaper. And that's how I do it here. I just barely turn it on and I bring the dial back so it's as slow as it can go. Finishing it off in a one or two strikes. Now for the other side.
Okay. So this is the satin finish on the lugs. See the contrast. So now that we have all the case components refinished, we have the case frame, the case back, and the bezel. The only thing I really polished for this job was the case frame and the case back. Since the bezel has the bark finish and the bracelet is in great shape also with the bark finish, I'm not going to be polishing those, but I do still need to clean every piece thoroughly so that when I put them in the anti-tarnishing machine um, as a nice, they're, they're super clean. So there can't be any debris on them or else uh, the, it won't take the tarnish off as well. So what I do for that, I use uh, these strawberry baskets. Stack them like this, so none of the parts can touch each other. So they're all sitting suspended in their own separate compartments. Put them in the machine just like that. Now for the bracelet, I rigged that up. Just like this, leaving it suspended in a basket and drop it in just like that. I turn it on indefinitely because while these are cleaning, I have a feeling that the movement is finished cleaning in the other cleaning machine. So right now it's probably time for me to do the service on the movement, which, uh, which getting right could take a couple hours. So this will be cleaning in here for a couple hours. You know, if I'm fast, maybe I'll have it done an hour, maybe even sooner, but um, I still need to check the parts of that watch. Um, and I do need to final clean it. So I'll probably just show you the work it takes to assemble the watch. I know I already showed you some, some dirty reversers, but um, yeah, fire it up. Okay, so case and bracelet have been in here for quite some time now. So I'm gonna pull them out, turn the machine off, and I'm gonna steam this uh, soapy water solution off the case and the bracelet. Pull onto the case with some tongs here. Now what I'm doing is steaming out the threads, the tube, and the chapter ring to make sure there's no polishing paste, make sure there's uh, no debris left in there. Same 
anything with the case back. The bezel. And the bracelet. Now for the bracelet, I just hold it with my hands and I don't get my fingers too close to the steam. Actually, that clean did very well. It's looking good. So, only thing to do now is to dry the watch. <clears throat> Now we have this LNR dryer. Place the pieces on top. I will dry the watch. So here, I have suspended the bracelet, the case, and the bezel into the detarnishing machine, Gem Sparkle Speed Bright. We have one ounce of the solution, the rest with water. Now we clip this wire here. We can see the light is on. And we can see some bubble activity. Taking the oxidation off of the gold. Now I'll do this a few times. I believe there's a timer, 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. The light will blink like it is now, or maybe it's not. And that's it. Do that maybe three times. Rinse, dry. And the case and bracelet will be looking super clean. So here we have a 2030 ladies movement completely stripped down. I have done some work. I've refilled the capsules. This is the bridge side, dial side. And if you don't know already, the cap jewels are right here and here. This is the cap jewel for the balance wheel. This is the cap jewel for the escape wheel. You could tell one of them is a little bigger than the other. The one that my tweezer is pointing to is the big one for the balance. And the little one is for the escape jewel. So another thing that I've already done is load the barrel with the main spring. And um, I did give this watch a new main spring. Maybe I'll do a video on how to load a new one. Um, I've shown a video of hand winding one, but that's different than using a tool, a winder to wind it, or just installing a brand new one. And I've also 
coated some parts like uh, this palette fork here with the uh, epilam. It's kind of like a dry lubricant. It actually is a coating with a lot of uh, surface tension so that when you This is the escape wheel, which has also been coated in epilam. So it coats the parts in with a high surface tension and then when you um, have the, the wheels running dry for a minute, that creates a little gap where the epilam isn't and that prevents the oil from bleeding down over the part. Um, it's good for oiling parts like this because the oil stays away from the epilam and it only stays on the parts of the piece where the epilam isn't. But whatever, that's all I did so far. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh yeah, the the barrel arbor wasn't good and um, I found a loose screw in the setting area, which is over here. which is this piece of the watch there. And that was probably causing the crown to come out. And yeah, I noticed the mainspring was looking a little funky and the barrel arbor had some wear. So we're just gonna put the watch back together now. I'm gonna do it as fast as I can. Now I like getting the crown and stem into the watch because then I have something to hold the movement with. But in order to do that, it's good to get the barrel bridge down. And to get the barrel bridge down, we need to install the barrel. And what I'm gonna do is, I Sure hope you can see but this is the barrel and I'll show you how I oil it Now this is the bottom of the barrel arbor. Give a little touch one side. Go ahead and turn it. Give a little touch on the other. Now there's just a little drop of oil on each side. Now I do the other side. There you 
Here we go. Now we get the movement here. Boom. Installed. Next up, let's lay down that bridge. Boom. Now we got to get the right screws. These 2030s are pretty crazy when it comes to the screws. We need a screw with a long head and short thread. Like this one. We do have a screw with a long head and an even longer thread. But you can't have this screw going in this spot because the threads are so long, it encroaches onto the setting mechanism. So we got the right one. Place it there. Screw it down. Make sure we give it a little tension. Now we need a screw with a short head, regular thread. And there it is. These ones are the most common. So I'll put it here for you. Now, since we have that there, What I'm going to do is get the winding pieces in. So we have a bushing here. That goes right there. Pop it down. And we also need this tension spring. But actually, I'm going to put the tension spring on top because that's where it belongs. But what we do need to do is oil this bushing. Either side, each side. 
Now, I like to be a little bit liberal when it comes to oiling. I'm going to place that there. And the funny thing is, I haven't serviced many 2030s. with uh, bushings. But in this case, I'm going to keep it there. And you can see now that even though I didn't oil the bottom of the crown wheel, there is oil on it that ran from the sides of the bushing. So. crown wheel in, put this funny little bushing on, now I get an intermediate winding pinion, goes there, but you know I need to oil that spot. And now we have the wig wag. Looks like this. It's a little wheel. And it's got some fat little pinions and it goes right into this channel right here. It goes right in that channel there. And it allows The wigwag allows the watch to wind manually when you're turning the when you're winding the watch with the crown. The wigwag engages with the ratchet wheel, which we're installing next. And that's what winds the watch. But then when the watch winds automatically, that wig wag moves out of the way. So it goes in for manual wind and then out when the auto wind is in function. And now we 
cover these bad boys up. And we screw them down. Now, install the ratchet wheel. Now the ratchet wheel actually is screwed down onto the barrel arbor, which is coming through the barrel bridge. Snap her in like that. It's a big screw. Know where it goes. Now that's not tight enough. So what you're gonna do is put your tweezer in the way. And Give it that extra turn it needs to be tight. Anyways, I hope we can get the third wheel in there. I, I can't remember. Just wanted to do that to show you, but yeah, third wheel will go right there. So, okay. So now I'd like to get the setting mechanism in. So. I just like getting that setting mechanism over with. I don't know. So first things first is the winding pinion. Now, maybe it's better I do it on here. I'm going to oil that just a little bit. I'm gonna slip it right in there. I take the sliding pinion Put it right there. I'm going to take the stem. And give it a little bit of oil. is more of a grease. I'm going to put it in like that.
I'm gonna oil the sliding pinion in the slot right here. And I'm gonna oil the sliding pinion teeth here where they match with the winding pinion. Then I'm actually gonna put a little bit of oil on the teeth here because this winding pinion rotates into the crown wheel. Now, I'm going to install the yoke. Oil the post there. Pick up the yoke here. That's what it looks like. I'm going to put it right on the sliding pinion. And you see that, how that works? Then, I'm going to take the detent right here. Now, sometimes these break, and you could fix them, and I'll make a video on those later. But I'm going to do a little bit of a thinner oil. This is less of a grease and more of an oil right there. Now I take the detent. I'm going to drop it down right here. Now the detent engages with the stem. as well as the stop lever and this yoke. So when you pull this stem, boom, it moves the yoke forward into the setting mechanism. That is because here there is a little pin shape that goes into a, a slot fixed into the stem. So that's how that works. But we need to have the detent spring holding that down. Holding that detent down. And this is what that spring looks like. It goes right there. Take the screw, drop it in, screw it down. Now I will add a little bit of this oil here to the spring, let it bleed in there. And now I will actually add a little bit of oil to the detent. I'm gonna add grease actually to the detent and the yolk. A little bit on the detent and the yolk right here, right where they touch each other. Engage the yolk. Now I need to install the yolk spring right here. goes right there. So this is where you sometimes want a helping hand. So I get a nice, clean
piece of wood. I hold down the spring with the wood and I pop that spring in there. Now I gotta grease where the spring touches the yoke and where the spring touches the wall. Now add the setting wheels. But before that, I gotta grease their post. Now we're gonna do the first setting wheel, then the intermediate setting wheel. Now the minute wheel. Boom. Now we have set lever jumper. This covers setting lever bridge, set lever jumper. That's what it is. Now, covers the wheels and the spring engages with the detent. Right here. Clip that into place. After I get one screw down, put the next screw in. Get the next screw down. Now, you gotta oil grease. Boom, there. Got a little slight mess on the top. But that whole setting mechanism is in. All right here. That will wind, that will set the hands. When the crown is pulled out, push the crown in, you go into winding. And you could hear and you can see the barrel turning. But when you wind the watch, only the arbor is supposed to turn. In order to make that happen, we need to install the rest of the gear train. So let's do it. Next thing I'm gonna put in is the minute pinion. But before I put the minion, minute pinion in, It has its own little spring here.
Now this can sometimes be a pain to get in. So I really got to look carefully right now. And if you can't see, then I don't know. Got a little oil on my tweezers, so I was making things a little sticky. Now we put the bridge on, Minute Pinion Bridge. Now that spring is trying to push that bridge up. Now this minute pinion bridge has its own screws also. They have like a domed screw head. This screw head right here it's more domed than some of the others. So, there you have it. You wind in the watch. You got your minute pinion engaged with the barrel. So that's the barrel runs directly to the minute pinion when the watch is running. So when you wind the watch, the arbor turns, winding the mainspring in the barrel, then the balance wheel is um, unlocking, balance wheel is knocking the pallet fork and locking and unlocking the power from the gear train and as that's happening, the barrel is slowly unwinding and turning the minutes. And unleashing uh, a little bit of power from the gear train, little by little, runs, uh, runs the seconds. But uh, we, have, we have a minute wheel on the dial side. It's turning the hours. Um, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that all that too much, but that's just basically how it works. Oh, sometimes I get this mixed up. Oh, another pain in the butt. Seconds pinion on these watches are funny. They have, there is a magnet, they're magnetized, so stuff always sticks to them. Well, I always clean it by hand. Instead of putting it in the parts basket, But now we gotta install the gear train, so. I'm dropping in the wheels.
such a pain in the butt. Now, put the gear train bridge on. Oh, you guys didn't even see any of that. Well, here you go. The gear train is stacked. Along with the minute pinion. Anyways, gear train bridge, got to put that on now. Just going to drop it down. Hope for the best. That looks good. Start screwing it down. Now check for the backlash. Wind it all the way up, let it go. What you wanna see There's an escape wheel right in there after it stops spinning it goes backwards slightly it's an indication that the gear train is free. Yeah, so we got some backlash. Now let's oil those jewels. Do a real close up right now. Third wheel, seconds wheel, fourth wheel. All oiled on the bridge side. Now we oil the dial side so we don't forget. Zoom this back out here. Doesn't really matter what order you oil them as long as 
get oil. And on these, the seconds pinion runs dry, so you don't even oil that. Boom. Got it going on. Got this wash going on. Now, what we need to do is install the pallet fork here. That's gonna wedge itself Those little stones lock themselves up into the escape wheel. Good, 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 good. Now, when we wind the watch, the gears don't move. because that pallet fork has locked the escape wheel. Now, there's a little jewel under the balance wheel that comes right in between these four corns. Every time the balance wheel goes back and forth, there's a jewel coming down from the bottom of the wheel called a roller jewel. And as it comes through here, boom, it engages with the pallet fork, hits the four corns and lets off just one tooth's length of the escape wheel. So I'll show you right here. Show you with my oiler, make sure it's nice and clean. The roller jewel comes right here, boom unlocks then the balance wheel comes back boom unlocks and it gets knocked the roller jewel actually gets knocked this way propelling the balance wheel back further than the hairspring on the balance wheel has all the tension coming back boom unlocks and gets knocked back just like that, little by little, every time it does that, like that, it unlocks one tooth of the escape wheel. And that is how the power is released. And the watch is actually able to track time. So, I don't know. I hope you are able to see that. Just like that. So now, before I put the balance in there, the balance has a stop spring and that's this. Now you need the balance to stop. Well, you want the balance to stop when you're setting the watch so that you, So the watch isn't running when you set it so you can actually set the watch 
to your seconds. And stop spring goes right here and it's actually connected to part of the detent. So right here you can see this part of the detent coming up through in the main plate, that little fork there is going and wrapping right around the detent. has a little cover go right there Screw that down. Saw a little hair. Now, you can see the detent, how it will engage. And stop the balance wheel. Now here is the balance. Time to install that. And this balance is upside down right now, but this I can tell you is the roller jewel. As the balance swings back and forth like that, The roller jewel is what's unlocking the pallet fork. And there's not much space in there. So, you know, sometimes if there's a problem You gotta look to that whole area. So now the balance is in, there's all that power built up, stopped up by the pallet fork and engaged with the escape wheel. But now once we put that balance in, we're running. This watch is running. And all we gotta do now is the dial side. Also the auto module, also the date disc, and also the hands. But, I don't know, we're doing it. I'm doing it. You're watching, I guess. Pull the oil on that minute pinion. Now we're gonna install the cannon pinion. Now this is friction fit to the minute pinion and the teeth need to line up. With the minute wheel and you snap it down or else you damage a wheel. So that's that. Now, we can put on 
the date wheel, just oil. That little post right here is for the date wheel. Just put a little bit in there. I already did it. You probably saw it. And that's how you do it. Um, then you want to get your hour wheel in there. Put a light lube here. And now you can see. This is how the whole setting mechanism works. And you can get an idea for how the watch runs and displays the time. So this has all the gears turning from stem to the sliding pinion, to the intermediate setting wheels, to the minute wheel, to the cannon pinion. And cannon pinion is friction fit on the minute pinion. The minute pinion goes around once every minute. So the minute pinion goes around once every minute the cannon pinion is stuck onto it. And that is where you place your minute hand. So the minute hand goes around once a minute. Then you have your hour wheel, it goes over the minute pinion, or over the cannon pinion, and it engages with this minute pinion here which engages the hour wheel. So you have your dial side minute pinion coming through, you have your cannon pinion on, controlling the minutes, you have your hour wheel slipped over that. And as the cannon pinion turns, it turns the minute wheel, and that wheel has this pinion, which turns the hour, which in hand turns the date. And every time that goes around, clips the date every 24 hours. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's just how it works. But we want to do the auto module now. So we're actually going to put this aside. Let it run. And I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to turn it upside down, so I'll take these parts off, but at least we know they're oiled. I'm going to show you that, how that balance wheel stop spring works. Pretty cool. So we're gonna let that run, and then we're gonna assemble the auto module. We're gonna put it on top, make sure that that's not doing that helicopter motion it was doing before, now that all the parts are cleaned up. I'm gonna zoom out. I'd like to get this done. Well, we still got some time left. Let's do a little oil there. Slip that over. Now this is the whole winding system. more detail than that, huh?
lube them up. Just a little bit goes a long way. like that put it on like that Now this is the last part, just such, it's a little pain in the butt. These screws are so tiny, I do it like this. All right, my watchers, this is it. Moment of truth. Done. Done. Very pleased. Looking at the bracelet. This watch is in such good shape. Check the polishing. looking good the tops of the lugs are nice crystals new and the watch is running great it's waterproof sorry I couldn't show the rest of the auto module or uh, putting the dial and hands on and casing that was it, but um, my phone had stopped. I'm gonna have to delete a lot of photos and videos in order to gain the, the storage space to do long videos like that. But this is probably one of my longest videos on just a really uh, spectacular condition watch considering the age I mean look at that that's incredible you know and just I don't know what to say it's just a good watch wanted to show you That even a little lady's watch can be appreciated, kept well, very nice. I mean, just look, the bark finish is not even phased. Bracelet is still standing tall. Now these clasps can be a pain in the butt. So I'll put a little Grease right there. And a little here. Anyways. Uh, oh.
clip nice. All right, well, thanks for watching. Sick little ladies watch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Not sure if you can see me, but um, boom. I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy your watches. Talk to you later.